Stand by. Q. Good evening. I'm Brad Gabriel. The name of the program is The Big Ripoff. You heard that? That's a siren which usually denotes a warning, and that's what this program is all about. To warn you against false advertising, misleading claims, and unscrupulous manufacturers who are out to rip you off. So, warning number one. The fluffy, fleecy hair dryer. <laughs> the makers claim that this dryer will dry your hair faster than anything on the market because it blows very hot air. Well, we had it tested, and the lady who tested it said, yes, it does blow very hot. So hot, it set fire to her hair. <laughs> Class action suit has been filed against this company by a group of bald-headed women. So much for the fluffy, fleecy hair dryer. And you know where it's going. Into the old rip-off can. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the big rip-off is going to do an on-the-air test of a product to see whether the manufacturer lives up to his claim. My assistant, Miss Susan Goodenow, has done the research and the preparation for this test, and I present it to you now, Miss Susan Goodenow. <laughs> tonight is a glue called Stuck It. <laughs> the makers claim that just one drop of this glue is strong enough to hold an average person suspended in midair. Well, I personally tested Stuck It glue on various items and found it so effective that I am going to give it the ultimate test. I am going to have myself suspended in midair by a drop of Stuck It. I have applied one drop of Stuck It to the top of my helmet and glued it to this block of wood. And I am now ready for the big test. Will stuck it, stick it. <laughs> We're going to take time out for this message now, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to leave Susan right where she is. And when we get back, we'll see how Susan and stuck it, stuck it. <laughs> Got a brand new life Just an independent girl With a special way of knowing Everything is gonna be yours I didn't do it maliciously. Yes, you did. Our deal was for three minutes. You kept me hanging up there the entire program. I felt like a chandelier. <laughs> we checked in on you after every commercial. Oh, yeah, after every commercial. Let's see how little Susie Goodnow is doing. <laughs> I think you swung for my ankles. <laughs> One little tug. You know what I think? I think you are disappointed that the glue worked. You would have loved it if I'd gone crashing through the floor. This isn't good enough. That is a terrible thing to say. And I resent the implication that I am so perverse and so unfeeling that I would have preferred to see you drop from the bar and go crashing through the floor. You make me out to be some sort of ghoul. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You should be. But do you know what kind of lawsuit you would have had? <laughs> Where is she? Where is she? Bravo, bravo. <laughs> Susan, you were marvelous. Just absolutely marvelous. Oh, thank you, Mr. Absolutely Clark. Absolutely marvelous. And you want to know the really exciting part of it? What? Because of your favorable demonstration of stuck it glue, the stuck it people just called and they want to buy a lot of advertising time on my station. Aha. Uh Aha, -huh. uh -huh. what? Aha, uh -huh. advertising dollars. That's what you're after, Gus. So what's wrong in attracting a few advertisers? That's what this show should do more of. Accentuate the positive. 
Gabriel, you're an alarmist. You know, you're like that character that was always crying, the sky is falling, the sky. <laughs> Chicken liver. Well, tonight, Susan was the bluebird of happiness. <laughs> Don't you agree she was a welcome change? Marvelous, just marvelous. You should see the mail I get from people who don't like your show at all because you never have anything good to say. Really? How many letters like that do you get, Gus? Well, there were at least three or four last week. Mm-hmm. What about all the hundreds of letters you get from people who like my show? Oh, that's the lunatic fringe. <laughs> anyway, my point is that Susan was the bright spot on this program tonight. Oh, you showed such remarkable presence and poise. So graceful. <laughs> have you ever done any stage work? No, not professionally. Oh, you would have loved the theater. I know I did. I hated giving it up. Oh, why did you? Well, Hollywood called. <laughs> and you know, I still see a lot of the people I used to work with. We have a buffet dinner every Sunday night for our friends. Sort of a ritual <laughs> say why don't you join us on sunday oh well thank you that's very nice of you <laughs> gabriel would you like to come too <laughs> i would love to gus but i'm afraid i can't on sunday night i uh, go to temple temple yes i'm uh, i'm analyzing an eastern religion now inner pantheistic cosmic realization on sunday nights they have a communal meditation well, Brad, why don't you go to an early service, and then we can go to Mr. Clyde's together. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> we'll be expecting you, seven-ish. <laughs> See you later. And Susan, marvelous, just marvelous. <laughs> In her pantheistic cosmic realization. Where'd you pick that one up? I had to think of something. I don't want to go to Clyde's house. Why not? It might be fun. It might be marvelous. Just marvelous. <laughs> oh, Susan, Gabriel, I'm so glad you could make it. Oh, thank you for asking us. Do you have any trouble finding the place? So many people get lost in these hills. No, we stopped and got directions from a shepherd. <laughs> I'm sorry Mrs. Clyde isn't here. She's spending the weekend in Palm Springs. But my mother has consented to be my hostess. Mother! <laughs> mother, this is Susan Goodenow and Brad Gabriel. This is my mother. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Uh, young lady, you were just great the other night on that... Big rip-off. Oh, thank you so much. You look so darling up there hanging by your head. <laughs> Have you ever thought of doing a Peter Pan? Oh, you really should be on television, you know. Oh, well, you know, I'm not really an actress. Well, then you definitely should be on television. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gabriel, I want you to know how much I thoroughly enjoy your program, The Big Rip-Off. Well, thank you very much, Mother Clyde. I think you're performing a wonderful, valuable service for your consumer's guidance. That's interesting. There are some people who would argue the point. They think I'm an alarmist. Bull. <laughs> That's the lunatic fringe, isn't it, Bad? Uh, you, you don't have a drink. Would, would, wouldn't you like a drink? Keep up the good work, kids. Uh, have fun. Enjoy. Live it up. <laughs> why, why, why don't you... Uh... Why don't you, uh, get, get yourself a drink? The, the, the bar's open. Can we go? Uh, you crazy? We just got here. Susan, I have got to get out of here. This is death. Death. Brad, will you relax? Listen, we'll stay a little while. When the appropriate moment arrives, we'll say goodnight. Listen, everybody, I've just had a request to sing something. <laughs> say goodnight, Gracie. Brad. This is a song I sang in a Broadway musical called... Twinkle, twinkle, lady, finkle. <laughs> you remember it, Mother, don't you? Hit it, Gus! <laughs> I'm happy as a pig in a puddle. Happy as a cat in cream. Happy as a pup lying down side up. I'm in a dizzy dream. Happy as a pie on a flapjack. Happy as a moth on a spree. Happy as a bug in a bear skin rug. Look my true love love me. Ask me if it's late or soon for Mother's Day or Monday. The way I feel, time past June come Christmas Day next Sunday. I'm happy as a bee in the 
clover. Happy as a toad in a tree. Happy as a mole in a dark, damp hole. The song left me very shaky. If I'm going to be sick, I want to be near a tree. <laughs> oh, Mr. Clyde, that song was just... Oh, it was simply... It made me... Uh, oh. What can I say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Susan. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I wonder if I could speak to you privately. Will you excuse us, Gabriel? Of course. Oh, Mr. Gabriel. I have someone that wants to meet you. She's been staring at you ever since you came in tonight. She thinks you're Fidel Castro. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Susan, uh, what you did on the show the other night proved to me that you're a very talented young lady. Oh, thank you, Mr. Clyde. Furthermore, I think you're going to go very far in this business. I really do. Look out there, Susan. All that can be yours. That's Forest Lawn. <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I mean Hollywood. This town. You can have it all. Now, starting this week, I want you to be an equal partner on the Big Ripoff Show. I want you to be a co-host with Brad Gabriel. What do you think of that? Uh, oh, uh, have you spoken to Brad about this? No, but I will. I wanted to tell you first. Susan, this is your big break. You're on your way. And you know what? You're going to be marvelous. Just marvelous. <laughs> Got the bucket and the circle. Brad, excuse me. Brad? You all set? Just about ready for us. Brad, I've got to talk to you. We'll talk, Ron, in about 30 seconds. Listen, Brad, you know this whole thing was not my idea. You just used up five seconds. Brad, please, you've been avoiding me all day. How much time have we got? 15 seconds. Will you listen to me? I'm listening, I'm listening. Okay, well, listen, first of all... Your time is up. Oh! Oh! Feel better now, so off your chest? Stand by. You are an insensitive, obstinate mule, and I'm not worth the trouble of trying to talk to you, and I'm not even going to bother. Then don't bother. I'm not. Good. You're a boar. Yeah, well, you're a pain in the neck. You're on. Good evening. <laughs> I'm Brad Gabriel. And I'm Susan Goodenow. The name of the program is The Big Ripoff. <laughs> Tonight, I'll start with the quickie Mickey toaster, whose makers claim that in exactly two seconds it will toast bread and even golden brown. Well, just before we went on the air, I tested this toaster, and in two seconds, this is what I got. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? The Quickie Mickey is the answer to the energy crisis. You can make your own coal at home. <laughs> Susan? Thank you, Brad. This is a new cleaning detergent called Macbeth. The makers call it Macbeth because when you use it, it's out, out, damned spot. <laughs> they claim that a few drops in a pail of water will do the trick. You take a white shirt and pour some chocolate syrup all over it, rub it in well, then, place it into the bucket with the Macbeth in it. And what do you know it is? Out, out, damn spot. <laughs> Brad? This toy is called Super Truck. The manufacturers claim it is so strong that even an elephant stepping on it can't crush it. Well, we don't have time to get an elephant, so I'm going to step on it. Put a stamp on it and mail it in for a refund. <laughs> Susan? Thank you, Brad. I have here the flip flop jello mold. The makers guarantee that your gelatin will positively not stick to the pan. Well, I tried it and I'm happy to report that flip flop lives up to its claim. You just take the pan out of the refrigerator and flip it, and the gelatin goes flop onto the plate. Brad? <laughs> my, uh, my advice to you, the consumer, is to be very wary of any claims a company makes about its product. There's a lot of false advertising going on, so don't you fall for it. Remember, don't get ripped off. 
On the other hand, there are also a lot of legitimate companies who stand behind their claims, so keep an open mind. Let the buyer beware. Let the buyer decide. I leave you with two words. Watch out. I also leave you with two words. Have faith. We're off here. When in doubt, call your lawyer. When in doubt, call your priest. What, do you, what kind of there. business do you have going oh, on doing about this? Susan, oh, Susan, oh, Susan, Susan Gabriel, out. the show just doesn't work like this. You're right, Gus. But I've got an idea. I think you should alternate. Gabriel, you do the show one night, and Susan, you take it another night. Oh, in other words, split the show between us? That's right. That way there won't be any conflict. It's an easy solution. Oh, Gus, I'll make it easier for you. We don't have to alternate. Why don't you let Susan take over the show? Meaning what? Meaning I'm out. Meaning I quit. Oh, Brad. Brad! Oh, 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 please, you don't want to lose him, do you, Mr. Clyde? Oh, he's a foolish, headstrong boy. It's all that hair. It's pressing on his brain. <laughs> Mr. Clyde, please, try and stop him. Talk to him. Why? It couldn't have worked out better. You have your own show now. Congratulations, star. <laughs> oh, hi, Brad. Hi, Susan. Won't you come in? Uh, look, Susan, I, uh, I had to come over. I know how you must feel, and, uh, I just wanted to let you know it. It wasn't your fault. Believe me, it was going to happen sooner or later. Truth. Brought you a bottle of wine. Congratulations on your new promotion. Oh. Okie doke. <sighs> Night. Oh, no, 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 Brad, no, please, don't, oh, don't go. Hey, uh, thank you, you know? I couldn't drink this all by myself. Will you share it with me and maybe we could have something to eat? Okay. Terrific. Oh. oh. Brad, you know, I really have to say something. And, and I'm, I'm not kidding around. I don't know very many people who would be as big about this as you are. No, no, really. I mean, you're really incredible. You're really a big person. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, Susan, you know, you, you, you can't take this to heart. These things happen. It, it wasn't your fault. Uh, forget about it. Forget about it. Boy, that Clyde. Oh. Ooh, he is some character, isn't he? Oh, is he something else? <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't worry, Susan. Everything works out for the best. Huh? Believe me, it does. You're gonna be perfect. I always had trouble with Clyde. From the very beginning, we had different ideas on how to do the show. I can never be what he really wanted me to be, his puppet. He was always trying to mold me, trying to make me into something I wasn't. You know, he didn't want me to be negative on the show, and this and that, and Brad. I was always independent. I Brad. still am. I... Brad, uh, you're not saying that I'm going to be Clyde's puppet. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I say that? oh I'm sorry, puppet. Oof. <laughs> That's a little bit harsh. No, but you know, when you're gullible about things. Gullible? <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. Oh, come on, Susan. You must be aware that, that the reason uh, Clyde gave you the job is, is because he's going to sell a lot of advertising if you go on the show every night and tell people how wonderful all these products are. Yes, but you certainly don't expect me to go on the air every night and give every product blanket approval. No, wait a second. I, I'm not expecting anything. Look, let's not get into a fight. We just have different philosophies. I'm for the consumer, and, and you're a representative of corporate America. <laughs> Brad. I don't mean to be inhospitable, but you have wounded me deeply. And I would like it very much if you would take your wine and get the hell out of my house. <laughs> okay. I'll go. Okay, I'll go. Go. But I just want to tell you before leaving that I think you're abandoning all the principles of the show. And yes, you are a puppet. <laughs> she is. <laughs> I wanted to come by and wish little Susie good now. Good luck on the first night as the star of her own show. Oh. <laughs> uh, Mr. Clyde, you know, I think you and I should have a talk sometime about the general direction of the show, sort of what you expect from me, that sort of thing. What is there to talk about? The direction of the show couldn't be better. Oh, if you only knew all the business you've already brought in. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to watch the show in your office. Now, keep selling them, honey. Keep selling them. <laughs> oh, 
You don't have to worry about me, Mr. Clyde. I'm gonna keep selling them. Stand by. Five, four, three, two, one. Good evening. I'm Susan Goodenow. The name of the program is The Big Ripper. <laughs> Well, Gabriel, I didn't expect to find you here. Just uh, cleaning out some personal items, Gus. I'll be through in a few minutes. Well, there's no need to hurry. Stick around and watch your protege. You know, she's turning out to be a big bonanza for this station. Yeah, I'll bet she is. On last night's show, I had some favorable things to say about the products I had tested. Well, as they say, you can't win them all, because tonight, consumers, the news is not good. I baked these biscuits just before going on the air tonight. They're Uncle Bubba's bubbly biscuits. <laughs> They're supposed to be so light, they melt in your mouth. Well, let's just see about that. Whoops! <laughs> Looks like Uncle Bubba's biscuits are not exactly light. <laughs> What are you doing? You're not supposed to be doing that. I like it, Gus. So far, I like it. Those of you who are shopping for a blender, this is not the one. It's called a Splendor Blender. It blends all right. It blends in with everything in the room. I can't believe it. I can't believe what I just saw. Gabriel, you put her up to this, didn't you? You're diabolical. Oh, come on, Gus. Give the lady some credit for originality. Susan Good, now you blew it. Oh, really, Mr. Clyde? How exactly did I blow it? You were supposed to say only good things about the products. Oh, I don't know where you got that idea, Mr. Clyde. If I can say something nice about a product, I will. But my responsibility is to tell the truth. I'm not going to be a puppet for you or anybody else. Well, if you do the kind of stuff you did tonight, I might as well have him back. I think that's a wonderful idea. He's very popular, and his ratings are marvelous. Gabriel, would you consider coming back to the show? No, Gus. Of course, you won't let me do the show my own way. Well, uh, what if I let you do it your own way? I'll consider it. If you give Susan a raise. All right, have it your own way. I can't control you either. Mr. Clyde, what made you think you could control me? Well, you're a woman. <gasps> <laughs> I'm right back where I started with you two. I can't win. I can't ever win. Born to lose. <laughs> Why? Can you imagine that? The nerve. I mean, to say that he could control me. Come on, Susan. It was a stupid thing to say. I mean, because I was a woman. It was, uh, it was foolish. Oh, that makes me live it. I should have thrown something at him. Forget it. It was dumb. Besides, I can control you better than he can. 